All right, we're going to learn how to make a crossover cable today. Uh, what I've provided, first off, is a diagram that pretty much explains what a crossover cable will look like. There's two ways to set up Ethernet cable configurations. Uh, there's the 586A and the 586B. We need to make one side with the A format and one side with the B format. And what that'll do is allow many different Ethernet-based components to connect to each other. All right, we're going to need the following materials. We're going to need Ethernet cable first. Uh, it's recommended that you put your cables at at least eight feet, uh, but six, five, four, three, even two feet will work just fine. But there is the chance that you will cause some issues with connectivity and you won't get maximum speed. With today's standards, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're not reaching anywhere near 108 megabytes per second. All right, next thing we need is two ethernet clips. Uh, what you want to do is rub your thumb over them on the metal parts to make sure that it's giving you a rough feeling to them uh, because we want to make sure the pins have not yet been pushed in. And last thing that we need is an ethernet crimper. This tool presses the ethernet cables closed and it also has specialized blades for stripping the plastic wiring and also cutting the ethernet cable so it is all even with itself. All right, so with that in mind, let's get started. All right, I'm gonna move these things out of the way. The guide we don't really need just yet, but I'm gonna push it up into the upper left-hand corner so we can still see it as a reference. All right, so the first thing we need to do is remove the plastic gray coating over ethernet cable. Uh, the color really doesn't matter on ethernet, but uh, for me, it's gray cable. All right. I'm gonna clip it about half an inch into it, spin it, and pull off the plastic sheathing. Clean off all the junk. We see that we have four twisted pairs, giving us eight ethernet cables. Uh, we twist the pairs so there's not any magnetic or uh, any type of interference that is causing disruption with the data transfer. All right, so first thing on our guide, we need to start organizing these according to the diagram. All right, first thing we need is the orange stripe all the way on the left, then the orange. So what I'm gonna do is just untwist them and then just kind of push them off to the side in the order that the diagram is informing us. All right, green, I'm gonna untwist it from the cable move it over, and you may have to pull and kind of snap them uh, away from the other cables sometimes, and you'll see why if you uh, decide to not do that. All right, you want to make sure you give them plenty of straight solid length so that they can connect properly into the Ethernet port. All right, next thing is blue stripe, next one we have is green, we have brown stripe, and we have brown. This side is usually a lot easier because a lot of the pairs are already together with themselves, so, uh, you know, rearranging them is not a huge issue. The only thing that gets separated is the green stripe and the green. All right, on our Ethernet crimper, we have a blade towards the beginning that has a little flat, solid piece on it. Uh, this is going to be like giving a haircut. We're going to make all these cables even with each other. We'll push it together, and then I will clip it. So now you see that we have a nice, straight line from it. What we're going to do is insert it into our Ethernet clip. All right, so we're going to insert them in. And we're going to push the Ethernet sheathing into the clip as well, because when we close it, there's a little plastic piece that will lock it into place. All right, do a quick visual inspection before we waste an Ethernet clip. All right, we have orange stripe, orange, green stripe, blue, blue stripe, green, brown stripe, brown. Good. We're going to take our Ethernet crimper. We're going to insert it where it says 8P, which stands for the 8-pin connector. Put it in. Make sure it's at the end. You're going to notice these teeth are going to push in the metal. Those are going to pierce the metal wire, and they're going to give us a copper connection to the Ethernet port in a computer or other Ethernet-based device. All right, insert it in, squeeze it until you hear that little tiny click. I like to squeeze and hold for a couple seconds just to make sure that the connections hold, and we'll remove it. All right, taking a look, we can see that all eight of the wires have pushed all the way to the end. And this is a pretty good job with Ethernet cable. We have the plastic sheathing going inside of the Ethernet clip, so that little recessed plastic piece is now holding it in place. Give it a tug and it won't come out. All right, now we gotta do the next side. This side is a little bit more difficult, so I'm going to allow myself a little bit extra uh, sheathing out. I can always trim it away if I need to. All right, so I'm gonna give myself almost an inch. Twist, pull off. So now I have a lot more distance on these, and that's fine for now. We'll trim it off so it looks nicer in our Ethernet cable. All right, I'm going to start unwinding them because 
almost all of these are being separated from their twisted pair, so I might as well just start with them all loose. And this can be frustrating at times. Uh, if you haven't built up dexterity from doing this before, it's definitely a little bit of a foreign concept, and these cables can be quite annoying. Like, if I bend one back, it's going to slowly start to come back to its original position. All right, so starting, we have green stripe, then green. I'm going to make sure that the alignment goes all the way to the base of the Ethernet sheath. All right, next one we have is orange stripe. So I'm just going to actually pull these out of the way, take the orange stripe, move it around, put it into place. All right, next one is brown stripe. All right, then solid brown. Then we have orange, then we have blue, then we have striped blue. All right, so I'm going to start pinching at the base to kind of force this to fall into place move it back and forth just to kind of wiggle it into place. It also pulls out any bends or anything else like that that we could counter as an error. Now I need to cut a lot of this away. Uh, I'm going to try to do about as much as I did on this Ethernet cable. So I'm going to actually give it quite a generous chopping. All right. There we go. Rainbow explosion of different colored Ethernet wires on the right hand side. All right. Take a quick look, make sure everything is still in good order. It appears to be just fine. I'm going to insert it into the Ethernet cable. Alright. Getting a little bit of resistance, but a little push is all we really need to get it going. Alright, taking an inspection, these are going almost to the end. A couple of them are a little bit off, but I know that the metal pins will clip into the uh, wiring. Alright, so I'm going to give it another push just to get the Ethernet cable uh, sheathing in as far as I can. Another visual inspection, green stripe, green, orange stripe, Brown stripe, brown, orange, blue, blue stripe. All right, pop it into the Ethernet crimper. Make sure it's all the way at the end. Squeeze it from all the way at the base to give me additional leverage. And hold it for a few seconds. All right. So now it looks like we've made an effective crossover cable. All right, uh, the next video will be testing our cable. So make sure you take a look at that. I'll link it in the description. Alright, thanks for watching.